So how did Mark Davis and Sandra Cohen learn how to work, walk, and talk again? It takes an enormous amount of effort. It turns out that the brain is a very uh, adaptable organ. It's able to recover and in certain cases actually take over for damaged areas in the brain by some proper rehabilitation, by doing some brain exercises and physical exercise. It helps the brain to actually recover and to heal itself after a stroke. Thanks to nurses like Roseanne Carty at the Burke Rehabilitation Center in White Plains, New York, hundreds of stroke survivors are taking positive steps back to their former lives. They were leading normal lives and all of a sudden, you know, they're struck down and it changes their whole life and it doesn't affect just them but also their families. Here at Burke, we treat the whole patient. We have speech therapists, recreational therapy. We're treating um, the depression and the emotional aspects with neuropsychology. Um, you know, I like to te think of our team as cheerleaders. And the people here to help you and encourage you that you can make it if you try very hard. My job was like home health aid, so I was really looking forward of going back to do that job. Now there's never a good time to have a stroke, but leading stroke research doctors like Clay Johnston and Bruce Volpe are taking the lead in seeking the newest treatments and rehabilitation techniques. How are you feeling today? Dr. Bruce Volpe, director of the robotics program at the Burke Rehab Center, is helping stroke survivors regain mobility with robots developed by a team at MIT. We see people three months or so after stroke. And uh, it's at this point that the stun of the stroke has subsided. And part of uh, what's natural recovery kicks in. One of the techniques that we've uh, begun to use is activity-based therapies. So you're going to try to make circles. So you see the black line. You're going to go in this direction of the arrow. Activity-based therapies can be uh, very efficiently managed by robotics. The MIT group at Mechanical Engineering has uh, made a series of interactive robots that give patients a mo sensory motor experience. We're not bringing the person back to the uh, place where he or she was before the stroke. Uh, we're just trying to help them as much as possible to recover from their disability. In fact, Burke patients like Terry Doyle are making great progress with the robots. The marked difference for me has not been in movement, it's been in pain relief. I was having a lot of significant shoulder pain that was holding me back. And I've noticed my shoulders stabilized and much less pain for me, which is good. This is how much power, how much muscle power you have had. This is how jerky or smooth your movement was. And this is how straight of a line. We read about it. And um, I started getting on the internet and looking at um, various things. And we managed to get an appointment with Dr. Volpe. It's very exciting. I push and, and make sure you're breathing and not holding your breath. Martin was always very disciplined as a, a professor, and it's been very hard for him to not have control of his life. You can do it good. Our main goal is that someone can be more functional with their daily activities. You're seeing significant changes in just simple tasks of tying their shoes or, you know, making a cup of tea for themselves or any daily task. Someone's ability to just bend their arm or straighten their fingers, it makes a very big difference in someone's life. And we're seeing the changes here as well. To become independent and have these activities that you and I don't spend thinking about become major events in the life of a patient recovering from stroke. So Florence, have you noticed any changes lately in Bob's hand function? He goes shopping and he lift packages. He makes breakfast in the morning. He can make coffee and fixes the toast. I mean, he uses his arm constantly. You feel stronger, Bob? <laughs> Muscle guy, right? And always chivalrous, right? You always have to put your wife's coat on. <laughs> Think of the robot as a modern tool for therapists who have, until this moment, really not had many tools. Back again. What can he do now that he couldn't do before? Um, he can dress himself a little bit better. Um, he'll start up a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. 
you'll help me with the set of the table for dinner. The robot is simply a, a, another tool to give the therapist to say, let's work a little bit harder on this particular aspect of your problem. Um, I think that the whole notion of uh, human fascination with video screens makes them pretty comfortable. I really thought more of a, uh, like, RoboCop, stick your arm in it, archaic device, you know, claws and stuff, and this is like a video game, you know? I think at first it can be a little intimidating, but once they go through the trials, it's very, very easy, and, and it's a simple program that can be followed by anyone. As he went, he started doing much better, and the smoothness of the movement was better, too. Now, there are very strong teams in uh, many places in the country with other kinds of devices that generate some promise for those who have chronic stroke. All right, give me that hand. Put it there. Nice job.